Well, I'm sure you're all familiar with the circle. You can definitely identify a circle if you see one, right? And in lower classes, you have also learned how to draw the circle. Do you recall it? Of course. The easiest way to do it is by taking a circular ring, like a bangle, and tracing it on a paper. But we can't always get a circle with the desired radius with this method, correct? So in order to draw a circle of a desired radius, we take a compass with a pencil attached to it. Then we fix a point on the paper which will be the center of the circle. Now let's say we want to draw a circle with radius as 5 centimeters. So we'll take a ruler and keep one leg of the compass near the zero mark while we extend the other leg till the tip of the pencil touches the 5 centimeter mark on the ruler. While maintaining this distance between the two legs of the compass, we'll keep the pointed end on the fixed point that will be the center of the circle and we rotate the pencil end of the compass around this point. And that way the figure we get is what we call a circle and the radius of the circle is 5 centimeters. So we know what the center is and what the radius is but before we move ahead let's revise these terms once. If you notice every point on the circle is at a fixed distance from the fixed point where we keep the pointed end of our compass and this observation gives us the definition of the circle. That is, we define circle as a collection of all the points that are at a fixed distance from a fixed point in the plane. This fixed point is called the center while the fixed distance of every point on the circle from the center is called the radius. So, if we mark A as a center here, we get the distance AP as the radius. Also, we know that if we have a line passing through the center of the circle, such that it meets the circle at two distinct points, A and B, then AB is called the diameter of the circle and length of the diameter is twice of that of the radius. Now, whenever we draw a circle on a sheet of paper, we can say that this sheet of paper is the plane on which the circle exists, right? And so, the circle divides this plane in three parts. The first part is the area inside the circle, which is called the interior of the circle. The second is the circle itself, which consists of all the points that are on the circle. And the third is the region that is outside the circle, which is called the exterior of the circle. So let's say we have a circle here whose center is at P and the radius is equal to R. Then we'll take B as any point on the plane where the circle lies. Now if the distance PB is less than the length of the radius, that is R, then B will lie inside the circle, that is B, will be a point in the interior of the circle. Next, if the distance PB is equal to the radius R, then B will be a point on the circle. And finally, if the distance PB is greater than the radius R, then B will lie outside the circle, that is in the exterior of the circle. So now you know the three positions a point can have with respect to a circle in a plane. Now, Let's take any two points, A and B, on the circle and join AB in a straight line. The line segment AB that we get here is called the chord of the circle. Basically, the line segment we get by joining any two points on the circle is known as a chord. Do you know any special chord in the circle? As in, a line segment joining two points on the circle that also passes through the center of the circle. That's right, it's the diameter, which is also the chord of the circle. In fact, it is the longest chord of the circle. And since a circle has infinite points on it, it can have infinite chords and infinite diameters as well. Have you ever seen a broken bangle? Well, it's not a very pleasant sight, but 
Well, glass bangles break a lot and you really can't help it. The point is, if you have noticed the broken piece of a bangle, it looks like these curved parts of different lengths and if you put these pieces back together, you will get back the complete circle. Did you know that there is an actual term for these pieces in the world of geometry? Let's look at this closely by considering a circle. Now, we'll take two points on the circle P and Q, but we won't join them in a straight line. Instead, we'll just take a part of the circle from the point P to the point Q. And this curved part of the circle is called the arc of the circle. Tutomate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.